This video is part two of my build of the E2A Hawkeye of VAW-112 Golden Hawks in my 1968 USS Enterprise project, the ship in 1-720, and all the Carrier Air Wing 9 aircraft in 1-72. I'll basically complete the fuselage sub-assembly, more or less stages 1, 3, and parts of stage 5 in the instructions. The cockpit is very basic, so I want to improve it as best I can. While it's enclosed and not as visible as, say, through a fighter canopy, there are windows all around and above it. And while the windows aren't the clearest, the general outlines and perhaps blurry details will be visible. The clear parts themselves are in pretty rough shape and require a, a lot of work to make them as transparent as possible. On the inside I'll start with the side panels built from sheet styrene. And I'll estimate the height based on the seat height. The center console will also need to be corrected as it's too wide and, and slanted. The steering columns and handles need to be pared down. The main instrument panel needs a cowl over it that meets up with the side panels. I'll improve the seats and their placement to make their location as close to references as possible. And I'll address the crew, their size, helmets, fit in the seats, and paint them. Along the way, I'll also address the fuselage, fixing pin mark dents, adding ceilings to the landing gear bay and tail hook bay, and correcting the nose light openings. I start with test fitting the cockpit floor and back wall into the fuselage. Consulting references for the side panels and noting their locations, I dry fit the pilot seat to get the approximate panel location on the wall between the seat and the window. Marking where each panel edge should be and drawing those perimeter lines gives me a rectangle on the cockpit wall representing the side panel. As I remove the clear parts to test fit them inside the cockpit, I begin to realize just how much work they're going to require. <laughs> those windows are so bad. I wonder if sanding those down would get rid of that hole. Of course, that's the side that has the hole. Dang it. Yeah, shoot. I can't sand it down, so my only choice is to fill it. Hopefully, Future will fill that okay. The surface of these is really bad and is going to require some special attention to get them to look uh, as they should. I'm using the Squadron Tri-Grit Sanding Stick to work down those waves. This is precisely the situation and application this stick is intended for, and it actually does a nice job as you'll see. Basically you just work down from the most coarse black section through the white less coarse section, and then finish with the gray side which has a smooth leather-like surface that actually buffs the piece. And then I finish with rubbing the piece against a very soft like glass lens cleaning cloth and then later I'll dip the pieces in in future floor wax. Returning to the side panels with my build tools ready, I transfer the panel outline from the cockpit wall to sheet styrene. Cut the panels with my razor saw and I test fed them in the cockpit with the kit instrument panel piece. Next, I want to top off the panels with a perpendicular panel of even thinner sheet styrene. So I measure, mark, cut out, and test fit a top panel for each side. So basically that's how it's gonna look. And then that should marry up with where the instrumentation panel meets the wall. I'm gonna have to fill these in with future. Just putting a drop in each of those just wanted to cover the entire surface. Wondering if I should fill these now as well. I'm going to fill both those at the same time. Uh, so my method of filling is to use gap filling super glue. So I like to fill it in first with the thick, let it get down in there. So I just need to prop it up to where it's level. We'll do the top one first. So it went into the center and then spread out from there. Now I'm going to fill that one. All right. It's a day later. That super glue is 100% dry. I'm going to tape around it and sand it down. And I am going to try to protect the rivet lines going through this. I'm going to tape around these. 
And this one we have to be careful because it's right by the front where the nose piece has to line up with. So I'm gonna cover that. I wanna try to make sure I don't mess with that edge either so that the two sides will still line up later. I wanna bring that bubble of super glue down to be even with the rest of the surface without messing with the rest of the surface. I'm gonna actually start with a medium and see where that gets me. I'm okay sanding down the tape next to it as long as I'm taking down that super glue and staying off of the actual main surface of the fuselage. So I'm just working my way down from coarse to fine sanding sticks. have it down and smooth. I'm just trying to get it to where I can't see the difference between the fix and the actual fuselage surface next to it. Still within the perimeter of the tape. So that's good enough for there. And now, same thing up on top. All right. these two line up. I don't know if I didn't obliterate any. Good. That still lines up good there. And that still lines up the way it's supposed to there. And that's much better. Just like I thought. So the row of rivets on the other side will tell me where that row of rivets should continue. Here are the clear parts. That drop of future floor wax filled those in, but still kind of left a circular distortion in the middle of the window, but they are way better than they were before. I'm also going to clean and dip these. I think I will do that now. Fingerprints or skin oil on there at all. Those are now clean. I'm back with uh, wax paper. Now I want to dip them in here. And I think I'm gonna dip these as well. What I like to do after I set it down is slide it and the excess kind of stays behind on the wax paper. That's pretty good. And then repeat the process with the other one. Cover that so it doesn't get any dust on it. Next, I attach the cockpit interior sidewall panels using medium super glue on both fuselage halves. Now it has panels. Another thing I want to do, when this piece is in there, you can still see below there, and I don't like that. So I'm going to make a piece of sheet styrene to be below there so you can't see through. I place a thin sheet of styrene over the opening and trace a rough outline. Then cut that piece out and repeatedly test fit and trim it down. I do a final test fit to make sure everything looks okay. Then I turn my attention to the openings on the sides of the tail hook area. I use scrap thin sheet styrene to make coverings for these areas. Then test fit them with the new opening cover. Then I glue them in place and do one final test fit of the entire area. Continuing with the clear parts, I want to test fit this in here and get this part ready. They fit in there nicely, but the two holes aren't the same diameter. Yeah, I'm just looking at the holes, you can see one's bigger than the other. So basically what I'm doing here is cleaning up that first larger hole to get it to its final size, if you will, and working on the other hole with my files and number 11 blade, and then final cleanup. These are sanding sticks that come down to a point. So just to more or less sand them as opposed to file. And that's about the same size. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks better. The very top of those two pieces is concave, and I want it to at least be flat. So first I clean the piece with Windex, then wipe it down with a lens cloth, then place a drop of future floor wax on each of the headlights. Good. So now we're revisiting the 
clear pieces and I'm very happy with um, the way they came out. Yeah, those windshields, I mean, you can see how clear it is now. Same thing with these remaining glass parts. These uh, pieces that go at the edge, uh, at the ends of the wings, have that same pitting problem. This piece that um, goes in the side of the fuselage has the same pitting problem. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna take the same approach with those. All right. This piece is not as accurate as it could be. This is the same width all the way from the instrument panel back, whereas clearly this is not. And this corner is rounded, then a step down to the bottom. If nothing else, that needs to be rounded, but I think this also needs to be raised to be level. So what I'll do is narrow it and then bring it up. Uh, so I'm gonna work on that as well. So another check-in on the clear pieces. These pieces still have indents in them. So I'll have to put another drop of uh, future floor wax on these. Uh, I'm pretty bummed because I got bubbles in each of the ones on the side. I try to get at the bubbles with my knife and pin vise drill then clean them with Windex and give them all another drop of future. Returning to the cockpit, I remove the seat placement markers on the cockpit floor with my razor saw and X-Acto knife. To narrow the center console, I again use my razor saw to extend the edge of the lower level all the way through the console. I do this on both sides of the console, then mount the entire piece on its side in sticky tack. I make perpendicular cuts with, even with the floor on both sides to remove the sides of the old console. I'm test fitting the pieces I just removed to see if I can just flip them over onto the remaining piece at the offsetting angle to make that remaining center console level. Okay, I have these shaped the way I want them. I attach each piece after coating the mating surfaces with medium super glue. Then I touch just a drop of thin super glue onto that structure and let it seep down inside. Once that completely dries, it'll kind of be like a solid block that I can then sand and then curve that edge. And then what I'm gonna do, if you can see in those references, there's kind of that outer layer of uh, metal. Well, that's what I'm gonna do with this. Just put this up against it like that on either side, and then that will conform to the outline, and it'll also fill my gap uh, here on the side. So I sand and file the new center portion of the console to the correct dimensions. Then I prepare a piece of thin sheet styrene and trace the outline of the center console onto it. I repeat this procedure on the other side. Then I cut the first piece out and test fit it to the console. I repeat this procedure on the other side. Then I bring the two pieces together and sand, file, and trim them to have identical outlines. Then I test fit the three pieces together to make sure everything looks correct. The three pieces clamp together in the correct position. I dab a few drops of ultra thin super glue onto it. Next then I'm, I'm going to put thin sheet styrene on each side of the seats, similar to what I did in the center console. So next is what to do about these. And I can make them narrower all the way around underneath the handle, if you will. I use sanding sticks and the banded flexi file to narrow down the steering columns and a very narrow flexi file band to improve the handles. Long story short, I went down a rabbit hole with the crew and the steering columns, culminating in thinking it was a good idea to remove their feet. Because again, this is inside the cockpit, and there they, it just went anyway. I tried to make them work, but there was just no way. I actually kind of like this one just because of how wide apart the legs are. And then looking down, at least you'll be able to see they have legs. Their legs are far enough apart where this can now sit in there cleanly and easily between their legs. The two will line up. You'll still be able to see their legs in front of 
from this, which is right about there. Premature and cutting these guys' legs off. Turning to the seat improvements, I intend to surround the kit seats in thin sheet styrene. With the seat on it and using a curve template, I trace the desired outline onto the sheet styrene and cut out the first panel. Using the first one as a template, I trace out the remaining side panels, then I cut them out with my micro scissors. I do another test fit of the panels and the seats and then the mocked up seat to the cockpit floor. Using medium super glue, I attach a panel to each side of each seat. Then I test fit the paneled seats on the cockpit floor. I use more thick sheet styrene to create seat back cushion, marking them to size against the seat and cutting them out with my razor saw, then test fitting them in the seats. Having determined I'm not placing the columns in the kit provided holes, I tape one side, then fill them with thick super glue from the other side. I proceed with cleaning up the new crew pieces, scraping seam marks, filing, and sanding them into shape. Then I test fit each crew member in their seat. I recognize that the white pilot's arm lent itself to being removed and repositioned, maybe with a hand on the controls. So I proceeded with cutting off the arm with my razor saw when... Shit! <laughs> Found it. After a short diversion, I then cleaned up the removed arm as well as that side of the body, then test fit the two together. I then begin building up the new crew helmets with their first layer of thick super glue. Next, with FlexiFile band tools, I narrowed down the remaining steering handle and actually hit the previous one again to pare them down as much as possible. Rather than fill that large hole in the underside of the cockpit floor, or front landing gear bay ceiling, if you will. I decided to just cover over it with thin sheet styrene. I traced the cockpit floor outline onto the stock, then marked the location of the landing gear attachment hole. Note the front landing gear attachment point has a lip around it. I traced that outline onto the kit floor, then using my circle template, determined the size of the hole required traced that hole onto the sheet stock, then also using the circle template to determine which bit to use, I drilled out the hole on my drill press. I also removed the sections along the sides for the shelves and the fuselage halves on which the floor piece sits, then I test fit the new piece in the landing gear bay. Now dry, I remove the masking tape from above the floor hole plugs. To complete wrapping the seats with sheet styrene, I measure, mark, and cut top seat panels and then glue them in place with medium super glue. Then I test fit the cushions again, sanded them a little more, and do a final test fit of the wrapped seats on the cockpit floor. To create the cowl over the main instrument panel, I cut out a strip of thin sheet styrene. I clamp the strip to the center of the panel, then working toward each end, one way then the other, I glue the strip to the panel with Tamiya thin cement and finally clamp the two pieces from the sides and let it dry completely. With my razor saw and its mini miter box, I create longer bottom cushions and panels to extend the seat bottom forward under the cushions. I return to the crew and continue to round out their helmets with another layer of super glue. I do another full test fitting, including the main instrument panel under its cowl held in place with static tweezers. The headrests seen here are only temporary as I'll make those next. With the two fuselage halves together, we can see through the windows how the main panel cowl lines up with the side panels on each side. I revisit the clear parts and do a final touch up of the windshield parts and the wing corner parts. Turning to the headrests, I explore and experiment with scraps of sheet styrene. I decide on as simple a solution as possible, a cushion of thick stock supported at an angle by a rectangle of thin stock. As I was consulting references for the headrests, I noticed that the top panels of the seats are curved below the headrests. Using my circle template, I test fit to find the right curve. Then I tape each seat below that circle and mark the correct curve on the seat top. Using my curved and or round files, I file each seat top down to the marked curve. Then I clean up the corrected areas with my number 11 blade and sanding sticks. 
With the various components of the cockpit nearing completion, I turned to completing the cockpit floor and mating it to the cockpit's back wall. I sand and smooth out the floor all around the center console, then test fit the floor and wall together. Holding the parts in place within the fuselage half, I touched Tamiya thin cement to the seam between the two parts on the side nearest the fuselage part. I let it dry, then repeat the process on the other side with the other fuselage half. Moving on to the new landing gear bay ceiling, I test fit it to the newly cemented cockpit floor and back wall within the fuselage half. Satisfied with the fit, I touch a few drops of thin cement on the side away from the fuselage half, then pull the whole assembly, clamp the floor and ceiling together, and touch more cement between the two parts. I build a stand from Lego bricks to ensure the still wobbly floor and wall are at a perfect right angle. Then I place several drops of medium gap filling super glue in the rear wall openings receiving the floor parts to solidify and stiffen that bond at the right angle. With the assembly dry, I flip it over, recheck for square, then test fit the front landing gear again. It's time to paint the cockpit interior. The interior walls are flat dark earth. Side panels, steering columns, main panel, center console, and seat surrounds will all be neutral gray. Going with dark green for the seat cushions. Black will go on the cowl, windshield, pillars, and steering handles. Yellow around the edge of the rescue hatches. Finally, the headrests will be red. The other thing I want to do is let's go through here and see if I can find anything that will work to attach to here for the throttles. I comb through the spares box looking for parts that can be shaped into the required pieces. I select and set aside a few candidates for further experimentation to represent the instrumentation inside the cockpit. I found a few sheets with cockpit instrument decals in my spares box. I test fit them, decided on the portions to use, then cut out various sections to represent the main instrument panel, the center console, and the side panels on the cockpit walls. Next, I brushed Pledge Future Floor Wax onto all the panel surfaces receiving decals, the center console, main instrument panel, and sidewall panels. Here are what I came up with for the throttles to go on the center console. While the Future Floor Wax dries, I paint the crew olive drab on their uniforms, white helmets, black boots, and testers 1116 cream on the faces and hands. Next, I laid down the instrument panel decals. I used three pieces to cover the main instrument panel. Then I soak all three pieces with Salvaset to get them to nestle down around the raised detail. I repeat the process for the two decal sections on the center console, and then again for the panels on each of the cockpit walls. The next day, to seal them down, I lay a thick coat of Pledge Future Floor Wax on all the decals I previously applied. I also cover the now dry crew to seal down the mix of acrylics and enamels to provide a smooth, consistent surface on both. Next, I brushed medium super glue on the naked seat bottoms and attached the seats to the bare outlines on the cockpit floor. To improve their appearance, I coated the crew uniforms with black Tamiya Paneline Accent. I allowed it to mostly dry, then blotted away the excess that pooled, then swabbed all the surfaces, leaving it in only the uniform folds, etc. Next, I coated the main instrument panel under the cowl with dark gray Tamiya Paneline Accent, then swabbed all the surfaces, leaving it between the raised detail. I scraped the seat cushion tops down to bare plastic so the glue will Bite. Then, after consulting references, I painted the crew helmets with black to represent the dark eye shades and straps around the helmets. Here's how the instrument panel and crew came out after weathering. Laying out the throttle pieces I scavenged from the spares box, I play around with and manipulate them while continually referring to references and eventually come up with a configuration that's close enough. 
a set of smaller levers where the console curves down, then a second set higher just forward of that. After laying down thick super glue on the bend in the center console, I carefully place the first set of throttles with my tweezers, then repeat the process again for the taller second set of throttles. And then paint the new throttles with Model Master Stainless Steel. I place large drops of thick super glue on the naked seat cushions, then place and position each crew member in their seats. With the crew now secure in their seats, I test fit the steering column between the left crew member's legs, then his arm part between his shoulder and steering handle. Happy with the fit, I glue his steering column into position. Then with glue on his shoulder and steering handle, I place his arm into final position. Then I glue the right crew member's steering column into place and nudge it into final position. Next, I paint the interior of the forward landing gear bay insignia white. I attach the cabin windows with Tamiya thin cement between the fuselage and the sprue holding the three windows. I attach the rescue hatch clear parts in the cockpit ceiling with microscale clear parts cement, which I've found dries very clear. Holding them in place with sticky tack, I use the same cement to attach the cockpit windows on each side. Next, I remove, test fit, and shape the center window frame pillar. I'll leave it off until before masking so as not to knock it off during the next phases of my build. To attach the cockpit assembly into the fuselage, I scrape the attachment points naked with my number 11 blade, then spread the medium super glue on those attachment points and place the assembly into position inside the cockpit. I follow the same procedure on the opposite side with the main instrument panel, scraping and applying super glue to the attachment point, then placing the piece into position, letting it dry, then doing a final test fitting. Next I address the nose weight. I test fit a large fishing weight in the nose cavity and have to square it off with a hammer on my bench vice's anvil. Ensuring it fits, I then cover the mating surfaces with thick super glue and place the large weight in the nose. Just to be sure, I also super glue a handful of smaller fishing weights just behind the cockpit's back wall. Next I address the cockpit roof piece between the two rescue hatches. I test fit to get the proper alignment, then glue it in place with Tamiya extra thin cement via capillary action. Finally, it's time to mate the two fuselage halves together. I start at the front holding the two cockpit sides together and applying Tamiya extra thin cement and letting the capillary action spread down the seams. I continue to work my way around the entire fuselage, holding each section in place and applying the cement, then taping that section to dry and moving to the next section until the fuselage is complete. On the fuselage exterior, there's an intake-like piece on the left side. Problem is, it doesn't have an intake opening on the front end. So per my reference, I mark out the opening on the piece and then use my number 11 blade and various files to carve it out. I set this piece aside to glue on after dealing with the nose cone next. I start with the front lights piece and paint the back of them silver so it'll show through and look more like a light when it's done. Then I get just the right hold on the lights piece in the nose cap and apply Tamiya cement between the nose cap and the sprue between the lights. I then place the nose cone on the fuselage with a few drops of super glue in the attachment points and then nudge it into place. I attach the rectangular intake piece to the fuselage side with Tamiya cement. After minor filling and sanding of the seams, to replace the sanded rivet rows, I first tested my rivet tool and compared that pattern to the kit lines. I realized the kit rivets are raised and my tool engraves them. Hopefully it won't be too obvious after weathering. A final comment. Uh, okay, so yeah, <laughs> you can barely see all that work I did in the cockpit through those windows. But number one, I know it's there. And number two, it was fun to do and good practice for future scratch building. 
So that's it for part two. To close out, here's some bonus video. Uh, being New Year 2021, thank goodness. Uh, and being a bit embarrassed by the state of my spares box in this video. I set about reorganizing my spares box and the four drawers on my workbench. I sorted the spares into plastic jars and labeled them. Racks and rails, bombs, rockets and missiles, gas tanks, landing gear, engines and prop, clear parts, etc. I also organized my raw materials box, if you will, which contains various size square and round rods, sheet styrene stock, etc. Then all this and the various tools went back into the drawers in a much more organized and accessible manner. And one last little bonus video. Um, a useful tip is when you run out of tape, don't necessarily throw away the empty. I don't know how many times I've, the, probably the reason that's so low right there is because it tipped over at some point. Um, so now I save these and I put things inside so it can't tip over. Um, just a little tip to end with. Um, so that's it for the, for part two of the build. Um, so I've finished the fuselage and now I'm going to start on the wings and engines um and hopefully the rest of the plane um and then probably one more part so a part four um for the painting and weathering uh and whatever final detail is left uh so thanks for watching and stay tuned